So we're going to look at using built-in heading styles within the Word document to make our chapter headings stand out. So if we scroll down past the front matter, past this quote that starts this particular book, all the way down to the next page we've got chapter 1 signified by the number 1. I'm just going to zoom in so I can see this in a lot more detail by a single page view. Now within an ebook, if we have chapters just numbered, like the number one, that's fine, of course it's fine, but within the table of contents you have to be mindful that people are going to be reading your book on a small screen smartphone or a small screen Kindle device, and that table of contents they're going to access with their finger. If it's only a list of numbers, it actually can be quite difficult to hit that chapter number. So I'm going to make the chapter heading a little bit more substantial. I'm going to add the word chapter. So it's now chapter one. Above this chapter, I have a spare paragraph mark. Then there's a paragraph. And then underneath it, this is a scene setting line for the text that's about to come. I'm going to put another paragraph mark in at the start, so a new line, so to give it a little bit of distance. And how we're going to use the built-in headings of Word is we're going to tell it what we want our chapter headings to be like. So I'm going to set my chapter one up to be a different font, a different size, a different emphasis, and a different alignment. And to do that, we'll use the groupings of the commands up on the ribbon. So up here within the font group, I'm going to change it to Times New Roman. I'm going to make it size 36. I'm going to make it bold. And next door to the font group is the paragraph group, and I'm going to align it in the centre of the document. I'm not going to use spaces, and we're not going to use tabs. I'm going to use the actual centre alignment. So at this point, I want to instruct Word that this is how I want my chapter headings to be. I want them to be Times New Roman 36, bold and centre aligned. And to do that, we're going to use the styles group of commands. So next door to the paragraph group, so it's the styles group. And under the styles group is a small button here, which is more. And if we click on that, it drops down our styles. Now, the interesting thing is there is a built-in style called heading one, and it's here. Now, if I zoom down a little bit, if I hover my mouse over heading one, your heading one may be set up subtly differently, but in this particular setup, heading one is a bland blue. It's, I think, an aerial font, and it's smaller than I want it to be. So I don't want to click on heading one. What I want to do is make heading one follow what I want it to do. So I right hand click on heading one, and that reveals a little context menu. And I tell it to update heading one to match my selection. So my Times New Roman 36 bold and centered. So I click update heading one to match that collection with my left hand mouse click. And that now does very little you would think. But actually over in the navigation pane, chapter one has now appeared because it is now a built in word heading. So I'll take you back through that. We set our chapter one up to be exactly what we want. So Times New Roman, 36, bold and centred. Then we go back up to the heading bar, drop down the More button, right hand click, then left hand click over Update Heading, and Chapter 1 appears on the navigation pane. Now you might not think that's done an awful lot for you, other than popping Chapter 1 over into the navigation pane, and even that might not seem that relevant. But if I zoom out, and go and find chapter two, and if you follow me through, so control key, press down on your keyboard, moving your mouse wheel back towards yourself, it zooms straight out. What well, we've got blocks of text, blocks of text, and then down here we can see a page break. That tells me that that's the end of chapter one, and therefore this page over here must be chapter two. So if I click on that page and then zoom in, sure enough, there's my chapter two. Now a little bit of consistency has to happen first. You remember we had a line and then we had the chapter number and then we had another line and then we had this scene setting. So I'll get rid of an extra line. I'll put an extra line in by pressing enter. That gives me a little paragraph mark and then my scene setting. I'm going to type in the word chapter. 
And then all I have to do to make sure it's absolutely consistent with chapter one is go back up to my styles heading, click down the more button, find heading one, which is here, and just left hand click. Chapter two is now set exactly as chapter one was, and funnily enough, appears over in the navigation pane. So again, we can zoom out, scroll down, next page break, that must mean that this is chapter three. So if I click on that page, zoom back in again, again, consistency, remove that extra line, put an extra line in, click here, the word chapter, and then we go up. Now this time heading one, because I've used it enough, heading one has now actually appeared in my styles bar. So I can click on heading one, left hand mouse click on heading one, chapter three becomes set. And again, it's now in the navigation pane. And that has used built-in styles of Microsoft Word to rapidly make my chapter headings not only appear in the navigation pane, but also will allow me to use them in a table of contents later on, which we'll come to when we do front and end matter. For now, by the way, the navigation pane allows me to rapidly move to chapter one by clicking on it, chapter two, chapter three. That's rather handy if you have a many, many chaptered book. So instead of scrolling through and looking for where you're going, you can turn the navigation pane on and you can now click and move rapidly to your chapters. So that's using an inbuilt word style to set up our chapter headings. Yes, it allows us to navigate. Yes, it allows us to build them into a table of contents, but it also allows us to do something else as well. Within an ebook publication, it has a tendency of stripping out extra spaces. So if I zoom out a little bit, just to show you what I mean. In a paperback, this chapter heading, if I wanted it to appear a third of the way down the page, I would simply click above it and put in extra lines. And then I would have to go back through and change every single chapter to be the same so that it looks consistent. And in a paperback, it might want to start a third of the way down the page because that looks a little better. But in an ebook, with the conversion process that's going to happen to this, these extra lines will get stripped out. Therefore, the chapter heading will appear at the top of the page, which wasn't what we wanted to do at all. Using heading style allows me to manipulate the spacing before and after the heading. And to do that, all I have to do is modify the heading style itself. So we'll go back to the styles, go up to heading, right hand click, Choose Modify, and we get a dialog box up, which has got lots of information in it. It confirms it's Times New Roman and 36 in bold. We're going to leave all of that as it is. Down at the bottom here is a button for Format, and underneath that is a paragraph. Now we've got another dialog box, which shows us that it's aligned, shows us that we don't have any indentations, but then it shows us spacing. You'll see there's a little preview window. So if I increase that spacing to 108 points, so 108, you'll see that my preview window, that chapter mark that was in it has disappeared. But if I click OK and OK, chapter three has now gone down the page. So I'm going to undo that and show you it again, but I'm just going to zoom in to show you a single page view. So here's chapter three as it is at the present time. Right hand click, left hand click on modify, down to format, down to paragraph, and then spacing. I'm going to increase the spacing to 108 points. Click OK and OK, and my chapter three has now moved down the page. And we'll hold there, that's how it will hold, during an e-publication conversion. The beauty of using it in the style forum, however, is that chapter two has also moved down the page, as has chapter one, 
and they're all consistent. So if I zoom out so that you can see, chapter one, third of the way down the page, chapter two, chapter three, all perfectly consistent. And if I decided that actually I don't like the way I've set my chapters up, I think I'd like them to be italicized and I'd like them to be in red font because that will be handy for my book. I can right hand click, left hand click on modify, go to Times New Roman 36, make it italicized, change the color to red, click OK, and sure enough, chapter one is now like that, chapter two is now like that, and chapter three is now like that. I don't really like a heading like that, so I can just undo and go back to how we had it. That's the power of using inbuilt word styles. It also allows us to set our chapters in the position, in the page, exactly where we want them, and an ebook publication will hold them there.